Hello, community. So great you are back. You might say, hey, my goodness, what a boring title here. What are you doing here? Well, we discover here the latest research in AI and welcome to my channel. Now, today we have as a little warm up four new brand new papers. And as you can see, published the October 1st, 2025. Now, there is something in common. Can you spot it, what it is? Yes, it is about learning our LLMs to make our LLMs and VLMs and video generators smarter. So, let's have a look. Four warm-up papers, one minute per paper. Scaling reinforcement learning via broadened exploration. You remember reinforcement learning here with verifiable reward, a key ingredient to unlock more complex reasoning capabilities in our LLMs and VLMs. And we had some recent paper of a pro reinforcement learning, and now we are learning about a bro reinforcement learning. And you might say, what is it? Well, you remember in the last video I showed you that the performance plateaus, they plateau out after thousands and thousands of training stuff, and there's nothing we can get. And if we add here computation time, no effect. Why is this happening? And they examined this. Now, the next paper is also about a multi-objective alignment across verifiable and non-verifiable rewards in our reinforcement learning here. And what they do, they have here a new framework where we have a new process reward model. We have a multi-action head DPO algorithm and they show us, hey, we have a new benchmark and this is by NVIDIA, Databricks and UC San Diego. Of course, it would be not here a video if we would have not today one to 10 new policy optimization. So here we have a risk policy optimization. You know that whenever we have reinforcement learning by verifiable rewards, we do have an entropy collapse. This is the main problem we have with this training methodology. And once the entropy collapses here of our AI, the model becomes overconfident, useless, reduces here the exploration prematurely and fails simply to acquire new knowledge. This was it. This limits our reasoning capability to complete performance. And now the idea is, well, let's have a risk-based approach where the AI is now analyzing here complex risk factors. If you want to see this in mixed value at risk integration, here you go. But of course, I told you we have another policy optimization, one out of 12. This is here, the adaptive curriculum policy optimization. And we have a new clipping. This is now the advantage of our adaptive clipping. And this is here from Xiaomi Incorporated, Beijing, China. But I think this is self-explanatory, what we're talking about. If not, here you have it. Here we have DAPO reinforcement learning. Here you have GRPO, DAPO, VAPO reinforcement learning. And I think there are other, a dozen or two dozen new policy optimizations that come out regularly. So I lost sight of all of this. But you might say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, okay, you read all four warm-up papers and you are now ready for the main papers. And you say, you know what, what would be great. Hey, can we solve the problems we discovered in your last video? That we don't jump around here like little cats here? Can we solve here this problem that we encountered here with the concept map here? That would be great, no? You would improve your Mars. Well, I have a surprise for you. We have new research just in. We have fresh talk here. Yes, absolutely. This is here one of our next main paper, paper number five, Deep Search. This is from Stanford University, UC Berkeley, University of Tokyo, Amazon, AWS, Riken, and the University of Washington. And they say, you know what, we have to do more research for reinforcement learning here by verifiable reward system. Because it's such an essential component in developing advanced reasoning skill for our AI. So, and what a coincidence, like in my last video, they found that there are training plateaus that are just plateauing out. I'm after thousands and thousands of optimization steps, there's no improvement, we have entropy collapse. What can we do? You see, the whole world is currently, October 1st, searching on this topic. So let's address it. And they say, overcome the bottleneck of reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. What a coincidence. Via an old friend, the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm. And you might say, okay, so what is the main problem? You know here we are plateauing out, you know there's a sparse depth, first exploration is happening, and that's it. So what the model really is learning, you see here the steep curve, just the initial steps here of the reasoning, but the complete complexity of the path that are happening later on in the reasoning traces, they are not learned at all. 
So after thousands and thousands of optimization steps, the model becomes adapted to starting of a problem, but it fails to master the complete long horizon decision making. So let's solve this now. And the idea here by Stanford is, okay, we take our good friend Monte Carlo Tree Search and directly inject it into the training loop. And we just force the model to systematically map out a wider portion of the solution space. Because yes, we have a tree and the tree is branching out. So we don't collapse automatically here to an entropy trace. It exposes here the model to a vast array of correct and also we have to learn also the incorrect one no? and partial reasoning path, everything. We want to discover the whole solution space. We want to learn. This is the main topic here. No? Monte Carlo Research Back Propagation provides you the fine grade credit assignments. We have a dozen videos on this. And yes, what a coincidence. And here we have the direct connection to my last video, directly rewarded with a higher Q value. You remember in my last video, we were talking that the solution to the plateauing is exactly here, the Q learning. So Stanford here, just a day later, comes out, comes out and has the same idea, the same solution. So Either you have a look here at one of my last videos where I talk here exactly here to entropy. We were coming here from the quantum field theoretical approach here on a concept network where I showed you we have a phase transition in the reasoning or we just go and you have to have, you have to read this paper. Absolutely. It is fascinating. And if you want to see here, okay, so we have the Monte Carlo tree search if you're not familiar with it here and we have an adaptive training cycle here. And we have, of course, a buffer, and this is the complete framework. Say, hey, can you explain this? Yes, of course, here I have a little bit of an explanation if you want to see. This is here, guided here by the entropy. This is it. If you're not familiar with entropic models, never mind. No, not with entropic models like Claude. Entropy models. This is it for you. And on the other side, the adaptive training loop. We have just a buffer and a hybrid strategy. And, of course, we use here our old GRPO objective in the tree, Yes, of course, we do Monte Carlo tree search. So, standard. There's nothing new. Training objective, again, if you're not familiar, the Q-value clipping and the training objective here for our tree GRPO. Beautiful. So, great. Old friends, we just combine, we just try out. You see, Stanford, everybody is trying to, wanting to improve here the learning capacity, the reasoning capacity. Let's have a look at the results. You say, okay, so let's take AIM25 here. And you say, okay, those are all the other models. And here at the end, in little green or yellowish or whatever this is, 35%. You would say, well, 35% for AIM25 is not a lot of. No, listen, 1.5 billion, a little tiny, tiny little LLM, not bad at all. 35% for 1.5B. This is not bad at all. We are learning to pack more intelligence into smaller uh, LLMs, VLMs, VLAs. Absolutely nice for reasoning. You understand we are limited here, of course, because we have to do a validation to the mathematical reasoning benchmarks and not really to open benchmarks. Yeah, of course. And yeah, 1.5B and they had a 128H100 cluster. Nice. And if it's at end, and what? Yes, of course, there's another one. And this is here also. And now we go for a graph rack. And everything that we understood now here from a better plateauing out and avoiding the plateauing out, we integrate now in a graph rack system via the reinforcement learning. And I might say, hey, finally, a little bit of a complexity that is a little bit challenging to understand. We have here MIT Physics, University of Central California, MIT AI, IBM Research, and great. They go now the next step for the knowledge graph for retrieval augmented generation. And they say, you know what? Let's make it a little bit more intelligent. Yes, because we want to improve the reasoning traces. So here we go. Efficient and transferable agentic knowledge graph reg via reinforcement learning. Yes, really important. They say we want to abstract it away from a real domain specific case. Can we build something that is absolutely generic in a symbolic space? So we are not limited only to one application in medicine and physics and theoretical physics or in finance. So buckle up because this is going to be beautiful. They say we take here knowledge graph R1, great reinforcement learning one, and agentic knowledge graph retrieval augmented, yes, utilizes here now. Now what we do is crazy. Remember, we have a complexity and the recipe was 
reduce the complexity, do multiple little pieces with a lower complexity, and then we just concatenate it up, or we sum it up, or we add it up somehow, and now we say, hmm, it's a little bit too complex. Now, you know what we do now? Now we say, you know, we come back to a single agent. I mean, I was smiling reading this paper, so you do have to read this paper. And of course, they do it in an end-to-end -end reinforcement learning. Real nice. And what a surprise. We are here with MIT and they provide us here a complete uh, GitHub repo where everything is there, where they even explain what they are doing. Very strange, but very beautiful. Why these two papers, these two main papers? So four warm-up papers and two main papers, because I want to show you currently reinforcement learning with ver verifiable reward. This is the hot topic. And they both work on this topic. And they go now, not really more fine-tuning, but they want to understand here the primary mechanism to train those models to perform systematic multi-step reasoning and a broader exploration. So they are applying now a new search algorithm, like the tree of sorts, not only at inference time, but we integrate this now in the training time algorithms. And we want to build this model and we want to have a generalization of this training abstraction. So let's do this. Plug and play, reasoning agents. This would be great without any retraining. This would be a dream. So let's switch here. And I told you we were talking here about our mathematicals. Now we go to the structured, beautiful world of knowledge graph, absolutely determined. And great. So let's start with the traditional knowledge graph rack system. You have complex multi-stage pipeline now and one LLM might plan the path and other generalize here. Sparkle query. You have a synthesis of the final answer. You have whatever re-rank. It is incredible, thrilled, complete system. And if you look at this video where John Hopkins University and Salesforce AI said, you know, the more agents you have, the more those agents degrade the collective AI. But we have communication problems. We have error in the propagation here of information up and down the network on a mesh network. Do not go with an extreme amount of agents because like with humans, you have a bunch of people in a room and you tell one person here, hey, this is the secret sentence. Five minutes later, you know the sentence will be completely changed. So let's have a look at these new mechanisms. Okay, before we dive in, let's see what we already have and what we already know. So on the left side, you see here our classical knowledge graph retrieval, augmentation generation, and knowledge graph reg, language model, knowledge graph great. You have, remember, four primary subtasks. We have here the retrieval to query the facts from the knowledge graph. Then second, we have the reasoning to process the retrieved information. Third is the reviewing of to verify the logical consistencies that it really fits, that it has a coherent logical structure. And fourth is then the responding and the synthesization of the final answer. And this is it. And this is here the classical knowledge graph rack system. I have a dozen video on this. But now we say, yeah, the subtask is handled here either by a prompt based with tough specific instruction in context learning, or you have fine tuned models here, everything that you are familiar with, everything that is new. What is new? This one, multi turn agentic framework. There is here, you have to watch out for this, the action set. So we do have our classical knowledge graph. We have now one agent only, not here the group of little agents talking here across chaos. And now this, we optimize now this agent here for an abstraction in a symbolic space. Easy, interesting. Knowledge Graph R1 has two components, a single LLM agent, this little guy here, and a Knowledge Graph Retrieval server. This serves now as our environment. So the server hosts here the Knowledge Graph along with a set of retrieval action and the LLM agent iteratively performs here a cycle of short reasoning followed by the retrieval actions over multiple terms and you get it great. As I told you, the real intelligence and the abstraction away from a dedicated action space is here in the action set itself. So we have an agentic knowledge graph rack framework. Great. We are operating now on the action space of this single agent. We have four simple universally applicable actions. These are beautiful. Look, what are they doing? You have here an entity. What relations originate from this entity? 
the entity in the relation, what entities are at the other end of this relation, the head relations, what relations point to this entity, and the relation entity here of the head, what entities are at the start of this relation pointing here. And you say, I know this. I'm familiar with this, of course, because this directly ref references here to our triplet structure of the head, the relation, and the tail structure that we have in our knowledge graph. So this is directly, if you want, an abstraction here of this triplet structure. So the agent learned policy is immediately transferable to any other knowledge graph because this is a generic structure. So we could enable here true plug and play capability. If you want to see this with an example here, I've given here a screenshot and you see here execution. You have the setup, you have the generation, and then you go really through the action set and you have here step one, two, step two, or whatever. Or if you'd like to see this here in my simple example, what is the capital of the state where Chicago is located? Here you have exactly get the tail relations, get the tail entities, get the tail relations. The query, the get the tail entities and the agent output, great. So what are the results? Uh, wait a minute, not so fast here. Because there is something I have to tell you. There's a beautiful hybrid reward function. You know, the reward function, the most important fact here for reinforcement learning. We have turn level rewards. That is here some of the format validity, of the query validity, and the formatting of the answer. Great. Plus, we have the global rewards here for the success. So we have a final answer accuracy, F1 score and a binary reward structure for the retrieval score. And how we do this, an old friend, GRPO group relative credit assignment. So everything is known, old trends, there's nothing particular. Just in the way we combine it in a clever way and do an abstraction, this is where the innovation in this paper is. And here, finally, these are the results. You see here for the known factors and here, knowledge graph R1, one run, in three run four different knowledge graphs you see here the jump so we go here on average here f1 from 66 68 64 67 70 74 so here you see the performance jump that you can expect in the best case scenario with this new methodology but what i wanted to show you is here the new idea a simple idea but also an intelligent new idea no we have suddenly a single agent multi term knowledge graph rack framework in which one little LLM queries here, also a lightweight knowledge graph server, and is optimized end to end via reinforcement learning. Such a simple idea. A single agent reinforcement learning, generalizable across all the different knowledge graph, schema agnostic action space, and a robust reward structure if you get the hyperparameters right. So, if we abstract it away, what we have? We have a new framework for knowledge graph retrieval, and it learns here a policy over an explicit symbolic knowledge space. So nice. Just with four commands here, so nice. And you know what? This gives me here a shocking idea, and please hold on, because imagine, maybe the future of the complex AI is not to build and scale up and scale up to 1 trillion parameter model or 10 trillion parameter model. But you know what? Maybe we can do it with just 10 billion, much smaller LLMs that are just clever enough to think, to explore and learn with the systematic precision of a structured search algorithm that I presented to you in the last two papers. I hope you enjoyed it. This is what was the video of today, the search for intelligent, energetic AI. This is here the state of research in October 1st, 2025. Subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.